let's get started. Let's go to abs.gov.au. And I want to at least try and record this so that you guys can go back. This is an important part of the assignment. So part of the assignment you have to do is use primary. So primary is data that you've researched and gathered yourself. That'll probably be mainly through the questionnaire and secondary data. But I would emphasise that if you do a survey and use ABS data, that's maybe sea level work, you'll probably get some more stuff, maybe specific around the industry you're looking at. You know, if you're looking at pets, how many people own, own cats, or if it's something around cars, how many people own cars, that sort of a thing. Right. Um, so let's have a look. What we're looking at are the national statistics. We're interested in the census data down the left hand side. And part of this census data is called quick stats. Okay. And this is where we are particularly interested in things. So what we need to do is it only goes back, it's based on the census. The last census was 2011. And the next one's coming up um, next year, I think. Should be this year. Is it every five years, I think? Yeah. So I think it's going to be... It's going to be next year. And they've already started working on collecting some of the information online. Usually it's been done by a survey that they put to give to you. So it lets me type in North Lakes and we'll see what we end up with here in Queensland. Okay. It's than it really is. North Lakes State Suburb. They'll say it's smaller than it normally is. Why? Okay. Yeah, okay, and that's the point. Kashmir's got a really good point. It's grown since 2011. What you could do if you're interested in growth rates is you could compare 2011 with 2006 and say, well, it grew by this amount over that period of time and kind of imply a growth rate since there. That would be a nice manipulation of data, yes. If you do North Lakes, do you do North Lakes from Mango Hill or just North Lakes? You, you can, you've got to decide that yourself. That's going to depend on your business idea. And you can see they give you a little map, so you, you get a sense of where it is. You, know, you can see where the highway is, where Anzac Avenue is um, there. So in this area of North Lakes, it tells us there's 15,000 people and there are awfully close to the same number of males as females. Um, the median age is 31. So that's the middle age of all the ages lined up. Uh, which I think if you compare that to Australia would be a youngish population, yeah. Um, do you think that the number of people have skyrocketed since then? Yeah. Because it has become quite popular. Absolutely, and I think if you go back to 2006 you could give yourself a sense of how much it's grown in percentage terms and you could say it's, it's bigger than this. The 31, is that picking the youngest president, all the ages in between and the oldest president? Yeah, that's right. So this is where you spread all your ages out in order and you just count in to get to get the middle age. Okay, so that's that's what they're saying is. Yeah, so that's the sign. I mean, that's interesting. Use the secondary data to talk about how it's going. Now, it tells you some interesting things, and I think when you're looking at an area, if you are looking at areas, it's always good to benchmark against the whole of Australia. Right, so you can get this. You can get this information if you want to enter a, a location. Right, the whole of Australia, and oh, that's not giving us there. Um, I'll have to go and have a look at how to get the whole the whole of Australia and give it to you. It has come up under Australia. Uh, it's got to be capital A. Capital A. Oh, yeah, there it is. So if you click on Australia and say go to Australia, here's what I mean by comparing. You can see across Australia the median household income is $1,234, whereas if we go back to our North Lakes data, the average household income is $1,769. So this seems to be an area where incomes are higher than average, and that might give people who've got more of a premium service more opportunity to be involved in that service. When we go down, if you're looking at different, different things, whatever it might be, you've got a breakdown of ages. Let's say you were 
selling a service to little people between the age of zero and four. Let's say you're going to be a clown. Right? Your business is a, is a clown entertaining business. It tells you how many people there are in that age group in North Lakes, and it suggests that North Lakes, in North Lakes area, 11% of the population are between that age, where across Queensland, only 7% of the population is there. So it's an area where there's a lot of younger people. There's more money and a lot of younger people in there. Um, marital status, right? If you're one of your demographic things you use in your segment, your market, might be are they married, single or not, that gives you an idea there. Um, education, if you're interested in that, um, and it goes on. Where people have come from, ancestry, birthplace, religious affiliation, if you were setting up a Christian bookshop for interest sake, you, you got 23 of the population is Catholic, 23% is Catholic, uh, Anglican, Uniting Church, and then it falls off um, pretty quickly in terms of percentages. Um, employment, how many people are working full time, and so you've got to wade through all this data, and there's a fair bit of it, and pull out the stuff that matters for you, okay? Pull out the things that matter for you to paint a picture of your target market, how many people there are in North Lakes, if that's where your target area is. Someone else, it might be different. If, you've, if you're prepared to do it online and you can send it to all over Australia, you might be then looking at um, the stats for all across Australia to work out what your target market is. But you want to use that to be able to describe what you're doing. Does that make sense to people? One other little document that I'll just recommend in your manipulation of this secondary data is something called the Household Expenditure Survey. Uh, and I know that is a fun sounding title. What that does is actually looks at the expenses side of what households do. So if you click on the Household Expenditure Survey, it gets done around the same time as the census. Not as many households do this. All households have to participate in the census. Not as many do in the Household Expenditure Survey. And if you go to Downloads, it gives you all the data in the summary of results. And this might be really interesting if, let's say, you're in a food service business. You might look through here, and it will tell you how much people spent on different goods and services. Uh, and you might have to be a little bit creative, so I don't think they had pets, for example, but they had... Um, recreational activities, right? So I think that would fall within there. So that can give you some idea of what percentage people spend on different things. Um, the, the number one table is this, okay? What's the average weekly expenditure on different things? So you've got expenditure on um, household housing costs, so for the latest one, it's $223 a week. Fuel and power, food and non-alcoholic be beverages, alcoholic beverages, tobacco, clothing and footwear. Uh, and just gives you an idea of where different things would fit. If you're doing something pet related, you might look at the recreation and you might see that people spend you know, $160, $161 per week on recreation. So you might say, look, my business, which is you know, cat grooming or whatever it might be, would only require $30 a week in the service, and so that's only a small proportion of people's budget, and that might be doable. So you might use that to justify some costs as well. Anyone have any troubles or any concerns about that? Okay.